Episode 65, Creating a Top Priority Life with Molly Claire. Welcome to Latter-day Life Coaches, the podcast where each episode is a conversation between me, Heather Rackham, and one of my amazing coach colleagues. Each coach here is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and certified through the Life Coach School. Together, we have one main goal, helping you live your best life no matter what. You ready for this conversation with the coach? Here we go. There is only one you, and so you are the only one who can create a life where what you really want is top priority. Many of us know this, but making the things that matter most a priority and actual reality can often seem overwhelming and impossible. Coach Molly Claire sits down to talk with Heather about how each of us has unique desires, wants, and gifts that were given to us on purpose by God so that we could each create the handcrafted life we are meant to live. The biggest obstacle to your dream life is you, and when you can both love yourself completely and get out of your own way, is when you will start to trust yourself and create the life you want. Molly said it best when she said, sometimes the hardest or most scary thing, and also the most important thing really is to go inside of us and find out what does success look like for me. We couldn't agree more. I'm so excited today. I, I get a little bit starstruck around my guest today, not to be, and she's not my guest because she's on the, she's on the directory. So this is our podcast. Everybody who's on the directory, this is our podcast together, but Molly Claire is one of my most influential teachers in my life and has really helped to bring me to where I am today. That said, I sought her out at a kind of a crossroads in my life, like both um, my personal life and my professional life. And anyway, for so many reasons, I am so grateful to Molly and so excited to have her with me. Today You're going to make me I cry, Heather. This is not fair to start this out this way. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I'm a crier. But um, anyway, so Molly, before we get started, I need you, want you to introduce yourself to people, tell them a little bit about you. I'm sure, you know, we have coaches that listen to this podcast, but mostly it's targeted to a general population of people who yeah. want to learn more about how they can have a better life. And so a lot of the coaches know who you are, but the general public probably doesn't. Yes. Well, thanks for having me. And it's been such an honor to work with you, Heather, in all the capacities that we have. So um, individually and in our business too. So um, yeah. And I want to just say also kind of going off what you just said, Heather, that everyone here listening whether you happen to be a coach listening or you have no interest in ever having a business or being a coach, everything that I think we're going to be talking about today will be applicable to you. And I want to make sure that this is applicable to you because the work that we do, you know, in my business is applicable to everyone. So, uh, so I'm Molly Claire and I am a master coach and master coach instructor. So I have a coaching business that now has actually evolved to helping coaches who are building their businesses. And I started out with my coaching business about, oh gosh, how long has it been now? Eight years ago, almost now, eight years. And uh, wow, I can't believe that. So um, I started my coaching business Um, At the time I was, uh, I had been mostly a stay at home mom for about 15 years. And um, it's kind of crazy how quickly I went from like one day, I want to be a coach to having my business up and running and diving into building my own practice. And I feel like, I don't know how much you want me to share here, Heather, as far as who (laughs) I am or where I've come from. I'm kind of giving you like the Cliff's Notes version here, but essentially, you know, I, I found coaching at a time in my life that was really pivotal for me. And it actually happened to be right before I started going through the process of getting a divorce, becoming a single mom. So essentially, I I started my business at the time that I was going through a lot of changes, which meant a lot of, you know, internal struggles and challenges for me. And I stayed the course with my business. I built my business. I started training coaches through the Life Coach School, training master level coaches. And all of this has come to fruition where now most of my time is spent 
working with uh, my business partner and sister, Amy Gianni, in the Coaching Collective, where we help coaches to be able to set up their business in a life and life in a way that really serves them in the long term. So my hope is to be able to share with your guests today really that importance of paying attention to how you want your life to be, um, how to prioritize what's important to you in your life, and to really expand what's what you believe is possible for you. So that's a little, that's the Cliff Notes version of me. And I'm just really excited to connect and share some, hopefully some good things with your audience. So. Well, I, first of all, have to say that I did go through the coaching collective and also full disclosure, I get to work a little bit with Molly and her sister, Amy in the coaching collective, because I just love to spend time because there. Why and not? They're gracious Everyone enough. wants to be there. So fun. yes, they do. <laughs> but I really am a product of like, and, and I, whether it's, you know, a hobby that you're wanting to take up in your life or something different that you want to do in your life. I couldn't see how I could make it all work. Like I, I loved being a stay at home mom. And this is kind of when I sought Molly out was I realized that I was kind of wanting to build a business, but what I was trying to build was fighting against my own personal life, what I had fought to create in my personal life. And so I really wasn't getting anywhere because I think subconsciously I was fighting against what I was trying to create. So I think coming to understand what you really want your personal life to look like and continue to look like when you build, when you create, when you bring something new into it is so important in whatever it is that you're doing, whether you are wanting to build a business or it has to all work. The pieces have to fit together. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's true. And I know for me, like when I started building my business, because I was kind of stepping into this new space of being a single mom, I was like determined that I was going to maintain the ability to have time with my kids, to have flexibility and to create a very stable um, transition for them as so many things in their life were changing. And so I think that there was, while this was challenging, I think there were so many gifts in that because it did a few things. It forced me to continue to always keep in line to the best that I could, not that we do it perfectly, right? But always like, no, my top priority is to make sure I am creating a life where I have time and freedom and flexibility to be there for my kids and to provide for them. This was like my thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that my why and my compelling reason for making money, figuring out how to make money and overcoming all of my limiting beliefs that basically told me, well, because you're a woman, you know, you can't really make money, Molly, and you can't make that much money. And so it was like, I had this kind of powerful combination of an absolute commitment to making money so that I could provide well for my family and holding to what I envisioned in terms of the relationships in my family and my time. And so I really think, I mean, as I'm saying this, Heather, right, you can see why this is kind of where the collective was really born is giving people space to figure all of that out and succeed in, you know, in business or whatever it is your listeners are wanting to do and in your personal life. So Because we have this tendency to think that we can't do both. And this was something that you really helped me see was I thought, you know, I can't build a business and be the mom that I've always been like, I'm something's going to give. And we think it like it's has to be either this or that it can't be both. And with you, you really helped me to see there's an and in there. I can do this Mm -hmm. and this, Mm -hmm. um, I just have to figure it out. And once I opened my mind to that possibility, Mm -hmm. so many ideas would come in. But when I kept it, when I kept it a closed mind of it has to either be this or that, I couldn't come up with the way to see that it would actually ever work. Yeah. And I think, you know, as you were saying that, I imagine so many of your listeners could be, we can, we can hear a few things, right? But one thing that I imagine is people thinking, oh no, this is saying I should be able to do it all. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of like a it's like this sneaky evil twin of this concept we're talking about. Right. The concept of, yes, yes, you can have both and you can make it work is very different than you can do it all. Spread yourself thin, do a little more, figure it out. 
Yes. Right? I think that is so key to pointing it out because that's what feels terrible. Like you said, it right? is a sneaky, <laughs> evil little thing. Cause you, we can, we can do all of it, but when we get spread so thin, it feels terrible. It doesn't it's, feel good. It's terrible. And I think that, you know, it's really common in our church culture with so many things that we could do, right. To think that we should be doing more and we should be doing it all. And we should be doing a little bit better job. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's too much. And I think it's a, it's a pressure cooker. And so, yeah, I, I want to lean in and really give this message of yes, commit to what you want, commit to seeing how you can have and be and do everything you really want. And yet this is not the message of overextend, do more, stress yourself out, spread yourself thin and meet everyone else's expectations around you. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they're two very, very different things. So Yeah, actually, I think it, for me, it was actually quite the opposite. I mean, that's where I started was thinking I've got to just, I'm going to have to just spread myself thin. I'm going to be exhausted all the time if I want to do all these things. Right. And it was almost like, oh, I can do this. And I, I was able to let go of the things that weren't important. And and then it, it was funny, the things that were actually important actually got more time in my life. Actually, I, they all became bigger and better than they, than they were before. Yes, absolutely. And so it's like, as I I imagine your listeners here, maybe those who aren't really in the coaching realm and don't really, uh, they're not building a business, right? They wouldn't be my ideal um, audience to work with me. But as I imagine you listening, I think it's really important for you to think about like what it is in your life that really matters to you. Because most likely all of you have those things that are important to you personally. And then you probably have a laundry list of things that you believe others expect of you. And you believe that you probably should do are supposed to do. And a lot of things that you've never actually questioned if you want your life to be that way or to look that way. And so I think the, the really the first step in really bringing into your life what you want and ending the pattern of overextending and exhausting is getting crystal clear on this is what I personally want. This is what matters to me. And I'm going to commit to creating a life where those things have priority. And I mean, and for the coaches listening as well, right? Because as a coach building your business, I think we have a lot of conflicting ideas in building a business, right? Especially a coaching business. (laughs) I wish you could all see my face right now. It's like that that complete look of, yep, you know exactly where I've been. Yes, for sure. Yes, because. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I was going to say, well, for me, and I think for sure this is going to be the same for everybody, whether they're building a business or or whatever it is they're wanting, there's so much comparison that happens. Oh, and that's what was happening for me was, well, this is what everybody else in the industry looks like they're doing. So this is right. therefore what I should be doing, or this is what all the ladies in my ward are doing. Therefore, this is what I should be doing. Yes. And it's so, it's miserable. <laughs> it's miserable. It's too much. And you're not like anyone else around you. And I think one thing also that I see as sometimes an issue culturally is that we do kind of think there's a cookie cutter way of doing things. And I think that that leads to even more compare and despair, right? It's Mm -hmm. like, well, these are all the things and doing a good job of being a mom and being a church member and doing a good job of being this, these things looks like this. And I don't think we make enough space for individuality and variety. And I think honestly, oftentimes that individuality and people leaning into who they are and giving each other permission to be that, I think can automatically get rid of a lot of that compare and despair. But I want to speak to what you were saying in terms of coaches too. So this is so fascinating. So just this morning, my husband and I were talking about our, um, the launch right now. So right now we're selling the coaching collective and we're in the middle of our launch and it's so fun and exciting. And I'm always trying to understand what is it 
where are these coaches now and where do they need to be in order to be ready to join with us to see and understand how this is going to help them. Right. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I are talking about this and he said, you know, one thing he said, the things I see that are very clear in your business are that you're there for them, that you're, you know, masters at helping them with coaching, that you will help them with their ideal life and a business that works for them. And this like warm, fuzzy heart, heartfelt, intimate, like passion. He said, it's all there. He said, I'm not sure that you're really showing them and explaining where they can end up even in practical terms. Like I was here and now I am making this money. I have a full list of clients, right? And we certainly do some of that. But as we were talking about it, the reason why this relates is that I think sometimes actually in our business, we've shied a little bit away from that because we know there is so much compare and despair out there. And we hear all the time in the coaching space about all of the successes that everyone is having, right? All the highlights, all the high moments and the revenue number. But how often do we hear about the actual profits? How do we hear? When do we hear about the expenses in a business? When do we hear about the millions of things that failed for this person before they figured it out? When do we hear about the tears and the fear and the doubt and people wanting to give up on something that was meaningful to them at some point, right? We don't hear about that. We don't hear about that. And even for people, like even for the moms or the people that are listening out there, it's the same with what we do on Instagram, right? We get on Instagram and we see, oh, my life doesn't look like this other person's, this influencer's life, but we're not seeing the reality of it. And it, it just leads to so much compare and despair in, mm-hmm. in business, in our personal lives, all the things. And we get nowhere. We get nowhere when we sit in that space because yeah. Yeah, that's we start right. to feel more and more terrible. And the right. more and more terrible we feel, the deeper in this hole we put ourselves yeah. and we can yeah. never get out of it and rise above. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So it's just like, I always think about this here. I am talking to you, Heather, right. And you can see me and things look fairly orderly. And if you saw the desk that's in front of me, it's a very different story. (laughs) I know my, my camera is strategically placed. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) So you can't see if if I was moving one inch this way, you would see a whole lot of mess over there. (laughs) Yeah. I want to share a little bit about, I know Heather, you've heard this story and I think it's really relevant to uh, all of your audience. And um, so, you know, when I, when I was becoming a coach and I was building my business, I can already feel like all the feels coming up for me as I'm sharing this. I I bet. (laughs) It's such an emotional experience, right? Life, this life we're living. So I remember building my business and I remember having this moment. So I had, um, I was going through my divorce and sifting through all that. And that's like a lot of emotions anyway. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and I was building my business. I was on my master coach call and I remember being really discouraged and wondering how I was going to make it financially on my own. And how was I really going to provide for a family when I'd heard my whole life that like, I wasn't like my DNA meant I was not a provider, right? Like that's kind of the idea that we get, like, that's not my job. And so it was so deeply ingrained. So I remember getting coaching on this. And I remember, you know, Brooke saying, well, Molly, why don't you just make as much money as your husband? And what came up for me was this immediate, because I'm a woman and I know it was, you know, connected to all of my thoughts and beliefs about myself. And I remember that like the second that thought came up and I realized that I had that belief there, I was like, oh no, that is not okay for me to believe that. I was kind of horrified at that belief <laughs> existing there, right? Yeah. Who yep. wants to think they believe that? So, so I remember that it's like, I can, I can remember this moment in like slow motion. And it was like my, my, the wheels in my head were turning. And I remember thinking, I don't want to believe this about me anymore. I don't want to believe that this is all that's possible. And I know that Brooke makes as much money as he does. I know that this woman and this woman and, you know, all these women make way more money than he does. And so it's like, I'm using like my poor ex-husband, right? Is this like (laughs) the person of focus here? He and I get along really well. At the time, it was like, that was, that was my goal, right? It's like, I want to believe 
that I am a person that can make as much money as that. And so even at the time, like, even though I didn't believe it, and it's not like I was immediately empowered to like, oh, now I think this can happen. I remember committing that one day I would believe that to be true for me. And, and that's really what anchored me as in building my business through all the ups and downs is I may not believe it now. I may have a lot of doubts, but one day I'm going to keep, stay the course until one day I'm there. And then of course, when you get there, it's like, oh, this is so funny that I used to think that this was so impossible, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's always the way, like you get to the thing that you're able to do and then it seems normal to you. And the reason I want to share that story for your audience is For those of you that are coaches and you are building a business, I promise that whatever you want to believe about is like is possible for your business. It is possible. It is not out of reach. And you don't have to believe it all the time or feel good about it all the time or be excited all the time about it. But if you commit that one day you will be there and you promise to stay the course, it will happen. It will happen. And for those of you listening who aren't a coach, and it's more that you are trying to navigate your personal life, your marriage, parenting, you know, managing a busy life, doing church callings and 8 million other things pulling your attention, whatever it is that you want to be possible for your life, maybe you would like to have some more like just space in your life. Maybe you want to have more time to have connections with the people in your life. Maybe you want to, you know, feel more open in your relationship, whatever it is. I think it's important to get clarity on what that is and put it out there as something that will be your reality one day. There's Mm -hmm. just a lot of power in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. And, and I'm picking up on one word that you said, and there are many words that you said, but one of them you said was even just space in your life. And I happen to know that Molly and her husband have eight children between the two of them. (laughs) So when she said space, I thought that's probably something Molly has very little of in her life, but I know that you're also good at helping to create the things that you need. (laughs) I've been really working on it. You know, it's been interesting because, you know, we, you can all relate to this. We do this great job figuring out this thing in our life. We've always struggled with, right. Mm We're like, now I'm organized or now I'm good at managing my stress (laughs) or now I do this. Right. And then guess what happens? Mm-hmm. We move forward in life. And then the next thing that is going to challenge that challenges that in us, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's really interesting to watch these cycles happen in our life because it is yeah. this, it's like, it's you, whatever it is that we struggle with always seems to reappear in the next. It does. In the next chapter. And then it re, yes. and you figure it out. And then, oh, this is the same thing I was struggling with before, just dressed totally. a different way this time. Totally, totally. So it's so funny. It's like I look at some of the things like the challenges for me, and it's always been, you know, giving myself permission to actually ask for things, to need some things, to want things. It's been things like setting boundaries on my time and not overextending myself. It's been, you know, having that loving, compassionate relationship with myself rather than that self-critical, I need to achieve, I need to do, right? So I have all these things Mm -hmm. and you make, you make some progress in a lot of them, right? So of course, fast forward from my earlier story, I, I am remarried and my husband and I have eight kids between the two of us. And I thought, what better situation to help me really get how I can commit to the life that I want, protect my time, believe I'm allowed to have space and needs and wants and set boundaries, what better opportunity than to have a blended family with eight kids, an ex-husband and his new wife and all the, you know, stuff that goes along there. Again, we get along really well, but that's, it's still a lot, right? right? It's more major relationships to manage. And then of course my husband's ex and all of that. So it's like, what a golden opportunity to figure this all out again in a, in a deeper way. I mean, really, I think every time, we get what we need even more. We figure out what we need even more. Yeah. So. Well, and I think it's pretty fantastic that you're able to see it from that vantage point. Like this is a really golden opportunity for me mm. to figure things out. A lot of people can't see it that way. It's just mm-hmm. more of a, oh, mm-hmm. here we go again. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there, there probably is a little bit of that mixed in totally. maybe in your, oh, in your story. Absolutely. But when that, 
when the belief that this is a great opportunity for me is the belief that leads out. And that's the place where you take all the actions from in your life. It really does make a big difference. Yeah. I think even having it as, as a little bit of an anchor, because obviously like I'm here talking to you, Heather, right on a podcast and it's recorded and I can talk about this lovely view of opportunity that I have. And while it's true, it's not like I'm making that up. It's true. We're also not seeing, you know, this uh, last year of my life of really having to struggle to figure that all out again Mm -hmm. and feeling like, I don't know if I can do this. Maybe this is the thing that's going to push my limits a little too much. And so I think it is important to anchor yourself in frameworks like that or beliefs like that, right? Like what an opportunity to learn this even more and to seek those ways of viewing things I think is helpful. And also to give ourselves a lot of grace and space to be in the figuring it out place Mm -hmm. because we have to go through that, right? We don't have it all figured out. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that really does come back around to that compare and despair. Because if someone was just to listen to this podcast and be like, oh, Molly got it all figured out with her eight kids, you know, they are not hearing the pieces in between the space in between where there really has been a push and a struggle and and expansion. Like there always is in something new. Absolutely. And and we can't let that. Yeah. I can't compare my story to your story because it's not going to look the same in any way. Even if I was in similar situations, our stories, everybody's story is always going to be different. That's right. And everyone's gifts are really different too, Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. I think that's where the thing is like, you know, someone could say, oh, wow. Yeah. She's got the eight kids and she's, you know, seems happy happy and seems to have it together. And she has this business that seems to be really financially successful and everything, but that shouldn't be everyone's life. First, there's the one part where, right, where you don't see like the behind the scenes and the struggle and everything along with it. But also the life that I haven't created is not the life, Heather, that you would even want to create, right? Mm -hmm. And your gifts, like your gifts are so perfect for the work you do in your business. And my gifts are so perfect for the work I do. And so I think for everyone, it it goes back to being clear on what we want, right? Like, I think it's important to be aware of when that compare and despair comes up to remember my life is not the same as that person's. Mm -hmm. My wants and desires aren't even the same as that person. And my gifts are totally different. Yeah. Right? One of the most influential things that you said, most impactful things that you said to me that has really stuck with me was when I was doing some coaching with you and and we were trying to get clear on what it was I wanted and what I was actually doing. And what you said to Mm -hmm. me was, so you're just trying to build somebody else's business. Mm -hmm. You're trying to create, you're trying to create something, this other person's business. And Mm -hmm. why would you do that? Their business is already created. They did it already. (laughs) They are, they did it already. And you don't even want, why would you want to build that exact same business? That's not, that's not you. That's not yours. And just I think that goes in life in general. Am I trying to like be somebody else's life or am I going to, yeah. do I want to be my life? And yeah, yeah. Gosh, I really yeah. want to be my life. I don't yeah. want to be somebody else's. Yeah. And I think that it's so normal for us to, to go into that because we just all, all want to feel good about ourselves, right? We want to feel accepted. We want to think we're doing a good job. We want to have that deep level of acceptance, like I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And we do crazy things to try to feel that way. Right. And I think that if we hear, oh, this is the way my life is supposed to be, or this is how success is defined. That's when we start chasing after someone else's dream or life, because we're just thinking that at the end of it, we'll feel like we're okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually will get to the end and be like, well, wait, that's not actually what I want. Yeah. Where, how did I get here? Yes. Yes. And so, and I think that's why, like for everyone listening, coach building your business, you know, human being trying to survive this life, right. That's listening, whoever you are. I think that sometimes the hardest or most scary thing, and also the most important thing really is to go inside of us and find out what does success look like for me? Mm-hmm. Can I be with me and decide what my end point of this journey is? 
And can I stay true to myself as I walk this path? Because you have a path that's unique and different. And if someone else disagrees or if someone else even doesn't see the value in the path you're pursuing, can you still stay with you and say, you know what? This is my path. I'm going to be here. And I think that is where that sense of being okay comes in, right? Is when we can be with ourselves and with the unique gifts and abilities and desires and wants that we have been given. Yeah. I don't know. It's so, I think it's exciting to think about the possibilities that we can, that we really do all have the opportunity to just be okay with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's an underlying piece in all of that, which is this, it's trust, right? It's trusting that we actually do know inside of us what is best for us, what our soul yes. wants, what is our divine desires, the things that were planted in us from our heavenly parents, like, and then trusting that our heavenly parents have, you know, the, our yes. best, our yeah. best um, life in mind for us. Like they're, they're always working in our favor and that our soul knows what that is too. Yes. So I think trust becomes so important. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that like connection with ourself, right? And and that's part of the self-trust, right? Of trusting that and trusting that God does not make mistakes. I don't believe the gifts that you have and the way that you are and the things that matter to you and the things that you want, that matters. Mm -hmm. And I think it can be easy, especially if we think that, you know, a want or desire that we have, if it's not you know, acceptable or it's not valued by other people that maybe it really isn't that important, but I think it's always important. Oh yeah. So important. And that's actually another piece that I have to thank you for, you know, after being a stay at home mom for so long, I feel like you, you get a little bit in this box and it's hard to push out of it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I think I had lost some of that self-trust. Mm-hmm. I, I trusted God for sure, but somehow that wasn't able to, I wasn't able to bring that into myself. I wasn't Mm. able to trust myself and you really, I don't know what it was, but I was able to regain that trust through working with you and Amy. And it was amazing. It's amazing what Mm -hmm. happens when we regain our trust for ourselves again. Yes. Yes. And I mean, it's a beautiful thing because I think when we're when we are lacking that self-trust, that is when we typically kind of have more frustration in our life or we kind of try, seem to want to kind of manage or control things around us to like Mm -hmm. uh, feel okay. And Mm -hmm. I think when we can have that self-connection, have that self-trust, be okay with accepting who we are and what we want, it almost opens up this space where we can just be a little more at ease, a little more yeah. at peace and have more almost like confidence behind the decisions we make. Right. Right. I think the comparison seems to go, there's comparisons always there. I feel like, but the intensity of comparison and your first inclination to always go to comparison, whatever mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. the comparison seems to quiet down a little bit. Yes. The, the yes. more you trust yourself, the comparison is yes. not as loud. Yes. Yes. And it's like, it's almost like if it does come up, it just, it doesn't stay as long. Right. Right. It's kind of like, oh yeah, there's that. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. That's (laughs) cute that you, (laughs) that you want to compare there. Yeah. 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 Oh gosh, Molly, I could talk this all day. Um, like I said, I, I have so much love and and admiration and respect for you and your sister. And I have sister, I have lots of sisters. So having sisters in business, I think watching you and Amy together is so fun for me because I, I love the sister relationship. It's it's really near and dear to my heart, but okay. Before we go today, I would just love for you to share with people where they can find more of you and Yeah, you have a podcast. So people need to listen to your podcast. I do. Yes. So um, my podcast is the Masterful Coach Podcast. And um, on the podcast, I focus on three specific things, helping you with life mastery, business mastery, and also coaching skill mastery. So, um, and share a lot of the, a lot of the things we've talked about here, obviously, and all of that. So Masterful Coach Podcast. 
And uh, my own website is just mollyclaire.com. I work with just like a couple of kind of high touch clients. And, Mm -hmm. and I do have a small group that I've done, um, but you can find me there. And most of my time is spent in the amazing coaching collective where, where Heather works a little bit with us too. Um, Just the coaching collective.com where we scoop up these coaches who are lost in a sea of coaches and and confusion and self-doubt and um, help them to be able to build a sustainable business that takes into account their life their priorities, their values, and build a business that is successful for them. So that's where you can find me. Yeah. I can't speak highly enough of it and so grateful all the time for you you guys. Thank you. Oh, we love you too. I could go on and on, but thank you so much for being here with me today. I know it's a a busy life and, and I am so glad that I got to have a little piece of it in mind today. It's awesome. It's awesome. Thank you, Heather. And to all of you listening. So um, hopefully people have been able to get something out of it. Oh, for sure. Thanks everybody for being here. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Hey, we just wanted to thank you for spending part of your day here with us at Latter-day Life Coaches and being part of this conversation. Share this with your friends so that you can have a conversation with them on this topic as well. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Have a good one, my friends.